Okay, everyone. Uh, welcome to the first of our fall speaker series. My name is Ann Bennett. I am the executive director of the Laurel Historical Society here in Laurel, Maryland. And this speaker series uh, this fall is in support of our exhibit at the museum called It's All Laurel, City Limits and Beyond. And we are very excited to kick off our speaker series this fall uh, with Barbara. She is the uh, President ex officio, the ex president, <laughs> past president of the West Laurel Civic Association. Uh, and she's uh, agreed to talk to us about the West Laurel, its history, its uh, civic mindedness, a lot of the community events and what goes on just, uh, just west of downtown Laurel here. So uh, thank you everyone for being with us tonight. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to put those in the chat or the Q&A as we go along. Uh, and if anything uh, is different or you have more stories to add or uh, if anything uh, doesn't sound right or if you have a, a more history to share with us, please also put it in the chat and let us know. We'll be happy to answer your questions uh, at the very end. So I just wanted to say thank you again. Welcome uh, and continue to participate with us uh, by using that chat and question box as well. So I will stop my video so you don't look at me so you're looking at Barbara and her beautiful PowerPoint uh, and thank you again everyone and please uh, welcome Barbara to our presentation. Thank you so much for being here Barbara. Oh, thanks so much for inviting West Laurel i.e. the West Laurel Civic Association to present to you guys of Laurel Historical Society and <laughs> since I'm currently the longest serving board member and also the one who, uh, next slide please, um, for ages has put together the our West Laurel newsletter. And I should point out that Bob Mignon is on the uh, uh, audience and he is the printer who for years did a wonderful job of printing this newsletter with great appreciation. So anyway, it was decided that I should be the one to present to you guys. <laughs> So I'm Barbara Solner Webb, as we said, lived with my family in West Laurel for over 30 years, have been on the West Laurel Board, uh, West Laurel Civic Association Board for nearly that long. Professionally, I'm a basic scientist, Professor Emerita at Johns Hopkins School of Medicine up in Baltimore. But extracurricularly, I'm an environmentalist, having been for ages on the state's Patuxent River Commission in fact, until I was one of those kicked off by a former governor, Larry Hogan, for working too hard to protect the river. Um, also for ages on the board of directors of the PG Sierra Club, of the Patuxent Riverkeeper, of the Trails Advocacy Organization, Trot. Sorry, I forgot to turn off my phone. Sorry about that. Um, I always forget to do that. Um, uh, do, 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 do. And I'm also vice president, a uh, vice chair of the county's uh, Solid Waste Advisory Commission. <laughs> so I care a lot about the environment. Uh, and this pr presentation may sound like a lot of uh, PR, but that's because I really love living in West Laurel with its many amenities and great folks who live there. And I'll try to convey a sense of that to you guys. Next slide, please. West Laurel is, as Anne said, uh, west of Laurel, big surprise there. Um, and at the time West Laurel Civic Association was formed 60 years ago, it comprised everything habited west of Laurel before Burtonsville. Um, <laughs> as the folks in Bentley Park, um, a newer uh, community on the west side of, let's see, can I, you don't see my cursor, do you? No, probably not. Okay, so a newer community on the uh, west side of Old Gunpowder Road uh, enjoy pointing out that they are actually in Prince George's and west of West Laurel. But since they're not in the official West Laurel, they formed their own civic association. And um, we are us. Um, so this shows where Laurel Historical Society is in Laurel and then West Laurel, as you see, is west of there. Uh, next slide, please. So um, the red faint line there is the Montgomery Prince George's uh, 
uh, boundary and about 10% or so, less than 10%, maybe 5% off uh, West Laurel is in uh, Montgomery. 95% in PG, as you can also see, uh, a small amount of West Laurel is on the east side, which because of how this map is slightly, um, the north isn't quite heading north. Um, it looks like it's the bottom right. Um, a small fraction <laughs> is on the um, east side, that is the Laurel side of I-95. And in fact, that funky boundary for West Laurel is because we are everything that isn't within the Laurel city limits, which is basically the guys close to 95 uh, north of Brooklyn Bridge Road. And um, we're almost entirely north of 198, except for um, Birmingham Drive, which turned out very fortuitous back when the ICC was being put in because State Highway was pushing a northern route of the ICC intercounty connector that would run at this area, actually down Route 198. And they also espoused that they pretended to not want to rip apart communities. So we could say, but you're going to rip apart our community, you know, in addition to it being a really stupid idea to put up here or to put anywhere, actually but especially stupid to put up here, um, they were going to rip apart our community. So that was good. <laughs> okay, so West Laurel, that is the area of the West Laurel Civic Association, which is what's here in this map, is composed of 1,800-ish single-family homes, uh, no multifamily homes, at least legally, um, almost all on what for ages has been called rural residential or R80 although the, the new zoning has some different names that I don't yet know. However, some of us are on ag land. Uh, next slide, please. Um, indeed, uh, my family lives uh, there on this circled area, the northernmost point in PG, a small five, uh, 12 acre farm with, next slide, please, um, horses and pasture and stuff like that. Um, and it's, uh, Indeed, the northernmost point in Prince George's County. Next, uh, go back one slide, please. And as you can see, it backs up onto the land right next to the Rocky Gorge Reservoir, which is the water there, um, which is WSSC's gorgeous uh, Rocky Gorge Reservoir lands, which has, for instance, an 18 mile long fantastic trail, uh, two slides forward, please. Um, that runs uh, right behind our house, uh, uh, goes over a bit east to Supley Lane where it starts, heads west, goes under Route 29, which is that um, squiggly line going up a little to the right of center, then continues on, um, goes under, uh, sorry, uh, crosses Ednor Road, Browns Bridge Road, and ends on, um, on uh, <laughs> um, it ends uh, on Tucker Lane in Ashton. So it's a gorgeous, gorgeous trail um, that WSSC kindly makes available for hiking, uh, bird watching, uh, uh, horse riding, no ve uh, wheeled vehicles, so no biking, and of course, no uh, motor engines. Um, because uh, the wheels cause ruts, which cause erosion into the reservoir. Um, next slide, please. Uh, they, they also offer a boating on the reservoir. There's a, at the top right is a picture of the parking lot at the boat ramp at Supley Lane, uh, which is uh, has lots and lots of parking, including for trailer parking. <laughs> and you know, canoeing, kayaking, and in fact, the um, li little baloney boats with the motor, with electric motors are fine too. Next slide, please. Um, so this is pictures of uh, the trail um, riding in different seasons, and it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous trail there um, at the left middle uh, row 
is actually when Jim Rosapep was once out riding, helping in a fight to preserve the public access to these trails, which they were going to close down and we went on. Um, and you often see Eagle and Heron, which are the two guy, two uh, pictures on the right in the middle column, and sometimes foxes and turtles. And at the bottom left is Laurel, which is like probably what was all over in Laurel before it was all plowed over to become what we think of as a Laurel now, because it probably was all this gorgeous Laurel plants, which are really beautiful. Um, okay. Where are we? Okay, next slide, please. So West Laurel Civic Association was started um, by uh, some great civic activists, uh, Leo Emery, Frank Martin, and Robert Hauser in 1964, with the immediate goal of bringing public water and sewer to the homes in West Laurel, which were then on well and septic, and because a lot of them are in, on small plots, some were really pretty problematic. Well, eventually the success with that endeavor of getting the water and sewer was a great kickoff for what became and has remained a vibrant and active civic association. Our past great presidents have included some civic activists that you've probably heard about, Bill Ferguson, Barbara Friedman, Tom Dernoga, who you have to know as the present and past excellent county council person. And some old timers may remember <clears throat> that Tom cut his legal teeth being the pro bono lawyer, walk, working with great activists like uh, Bob and Jeannie Mignon and Mary Lehman in fighting against the Laurel Racetrack being taken over by Jack Kent Cook to become an enormous Redskins stadium that instead went down to become FedEx Field. Uh, other of our past presidents include Mary Lehman, uh, uh, who was a past uh, great uh, um, uh, uh, county council person and is now a, a wonderful a delegate in the General Assembly, also activist uh, Melissa Dast and, and a whole bunch of others, including myself. Okay, so for over 60 years, West Laurel Civic Association has been active in working to preserve the quality of the neighborhood and read between the lines, that means fighting almost always successfully to keep out incompatible development proposals many of which were very egregious, especially in the early years. So I've just sat down and reread all the newsletters from 1980 on. I couldn't find any of the earlier ones to discover. I didn't know this, that these proposals included a 25-story incinerator because they wanted to increase the amount of burning of trash. And West Laurel Civic Association, Jane Blewett was a leader, very successfully pushed for the county to instead consider instituting recycling rather than burning all of this trash. And West Laurel was a leader in this nascent recycling efforts. And indeed it was reported in the newsletter that in the first year, 94% of the homes in West Laurel participated in this recycling program, which is really pretty darn impressive. So the nasty development projects that <laughs> West Laurel Civic Association has also fought against included a mega MXT development, which, as you know, is basically uncontrolled high density development, can do anything. Along Route 198, the entire stretch from Bond Mill Road to Bower Lane, ugh, would that have been awful? Uh, separately, there was going to be a large DMV center, the one that eventually went down to Beltsville in US-1. Also, there was a big push for a music hall, something like 30,000 seats styled after Bronson, Missouri. I was involved in fighting against that one. Um, <clears throat> and a number of other high density commercial development proposals that really are very unfitting for our neighborhood and nearby West Laurel, which we fought against successfully. Uh, West Laurel Civic Association also led a protracted over 10 year fight to eventually get sound barriers for West Laurel along I-95, also to make a whole bunch of road improvements. There evidently was a horrible grading problem on 198 at uh, Bond Mill Road that nobody could see anything and there were accidents up to Kazoo. And eventually they got that regraded 
uh, we've uh, done a lot of things was getting uh, traffic lights. Uh, next slide, please. Our most recent success was getting uh, no U-turn, all of these um, yellow uh, posts, uh, no U-turn on 198 for the guys heading towards Burtonsville, but they want a U-turn to get to the Tubbies. And because there are left turns both into Riding Stable Road and out of Riding Stable Road just ahead, um, it would made accidents up to Kazoo. And so this uh, no U-turn has really improved things a lot. Uh, uh, West Laurel has also had major efforts to fix uh, uh, potholes, um, both in Prince George's and in the Montgomery County section. And there's a funny story on that. Uh, in my first year as West Laurel president, while waiting to testify at the Prince George's County budget to ask that the innumerable bad potholes that we've had in our roads for years and the county has ignored our jillions and jillions of pleas to fix the potholes. So I fortuitously was sitting next to then county council person, Mary Lehman. And she knew the answers to my various questions about the number of miles of county roadway, the costs of resurfacing a mile of county roadway, and the yearly budget of county resurfacing. So when my testimony to the county executive, who then was Rashern Baker, uh, started, I started by asking if he knew how many years with the current budget, the average section of roadway would wait between resurfacings. That is, if you have a section of roadway, when, when would you expect it to be resurfaced? And he said, oh, maybe within 10 years. And I said, no, it's longer, guess again. He said, 15 years? So then I did the third grade math for him, showing that with these numbers, the permitted repaving is once every 750 years. They've now gotten more money into the repaving, but at that time it was once every 750 years. So I said I wasn't there to ask for uh, West Laurel's roads to be repaved, but because our pothole patches have to last for another 749 years, I'd really hope that they'd be willing to fix all the potholes. And magically, within two weeks, every pothole was fixed wonderfully. It was very exciting. Um, okay. <laughs> Uh, West Laurel offers the residents uh, not only our efforts and the above mentioned newsletter, the hotline three times a year, but also valuable, next slide please, valuable general meetings three times a year with relevant presentations, which are quite well attended. And here were uh, three examples showing when we had a big discussion <laughs> of WSSC going to put a pipeline down Von Mill uh, Road which has been an ongoing effort for 15 years um, and is now in the process of being delayed again. Um, and uh, the middle one shows when uh, Bond Mill Elementary School, uh, which conveniently is in, on Bond Mill Road here in West Laurel, <laughs> that every spring puts on an incredible uh, spring performance, a musical usually. Um, so the kids came to the Civic Association and uh, put on some of their great numbers. So that was the middle one. And the bottom one is just a time when County Executive Angela Alsa Brooks was out talking with us. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Uh, so uh, for 15 years, uh, West Laurel also has been, next slide please, offering our residents a dumpster day. So uh, where uh, the county brings out dumpsters and uh, the residents can come and get rid of their excess stuff, which is now obviously way less uh, important with uh, a bulky pickup being every week at one's house, but it's still appreciated. In addition, we have, we got, uh, have a secure document shredder, which is the bottom left which this hammer hill takes it into confetti type of thing, um, which is pretty appreciated by our residents. And I bring my horse trailer and truck, which are the pictures on the right, to load with repurposable items and then take to a local charity. So we try to make best use of the items that are brought in. 
Uh, West Laurel Civic Association also encourages its residents to participate in the West Laurel, next slide please, uh, gardening group. Uh, the uh, top left picture is a plant swap organized uh, uh, by this gardening group, uh, the West Laurel uh, bird watching group, uh, and to hold block parties, like a picture on the right. Um, and uh, I offered to ferry, uh, to collect and ferry the donations that people have for the animal shelter down to uh, the animal shelter, which is uh, on the wrong side of Upper Marlboro. And so by being able to take them en masse, it saves a whole lot of driving and encourages people to donate their old towels and whatnot to the animal shelter because the puppies and kitties appreciate it. Um, we've also organized, West Laurel Civic Association has also organized a bunch of community enhancing efforts, such as the installation of these wren houses, which uh, theoretically at least help reduce mosquito populations without spraying. Uh, next slide, please. West Laurel has also helped sponsor <laughs> for many years the yearly reindeer run to commemorate the tragic passing of a West Laurel resident and to draw attention to mental health. And uh, next slide, please. For over 40 years, West Laurel's sister organization, West Laurel Civic Association sister organization, the West Laurel Recreation Council has offered children uh, what used to be called Easter and are now spring egg hunts, what used to be called Christmas and are now winter holiday parties, pool nights, and uh, uh, many classes. And recently these offerings, offerings have been expanded to also include very well-received exercise classes. Uh, um, and also uh, they've done a uh, paint and sip. So these are other four fun things for the residents to do. Um, next slide, please. <laughs> Furthermore, uh, West Laurel is home to the West Laurel Swim Club, a lovely decades existing outdoor community membership pool that offers not only swimming, but water aerobics classes, barbecues, movie nights, 5K races, etc. So another community bonding sort of activities. And I believe our re residents have felt that the West Laurel Civic Association really works for them and is worthwhile because the county tells us that the West Laurel Civic Association has many times more dues paying members than any other civic association in the county, whether calculated by straight numbers or per capita. Uh, reportedly in 1980, which is again, as I say, the oldest newsletter I could find, over half of the then 1,400 homes in West Laurel were dues paying uh, civic association members. And then as the number of homes increased and the frequency of the totally egregious development proposals decreased, we decreased to have, but still over a quarter of the families be members of the civic association. And then two years ago, two, the two HOAs within West Laurel decided that since the Civic Association promotes exactly what their HOA wants, which is a better community, they kindly would join the Civic Association for each one of their HOA members. So now West Laurel's dues paying membership is well over a third of 1800 homes. So being relatively quiet with at least a somewhat rural, rural atmosphere and lots of great amenities let out yet over five, yet only five minutes off of I-95, West Laurel is a swell location to live. In addition to the of, above mentioned amenities of WSSC's wonderful Rocky Gorge Reservoir offering the hiking, boating, picnicking, tot lots, et cetera, West Laurel has a number of pocket parks. Indeed, West Laurel Civic Association was instrumental in getting the county to install the uh, pocket park number two on uh, uh, Park Hall Drive and in getting a bunch of amenities at the park number one, which is now the Duckett Park uh, uh, at the corner of Bond Mill and um, Brooklyn Bridge, it's called there. Um, and also instrumental in getting a bunch of amenities at nearby Fairland Park. I should mention though, however, that after getting the MNC PPP to install the T. Howard Duckett a community center, it turned out to suffer from very appropriate misuse and horrible 
loud noise, inappropriate parties, condoms spread all across the field, et cetera. Um, so we got the county to make this the only one of their facilities that's not rented out in the evenings. And that has been just a complete blessing. Um, West Laurel also has Bond Mill Elementary, which I mentioned above, uh, one of uh, always the best rated elementary schools in the county. It's 10 minutes from downtown Laurel, five minutes from downtown Burtonsville and Route 29. But probably most importantly are the great people living here. And finally, I should mention that we're a diverse community. I don't know if they actually are any official numbers. I would guess we're something like 40% white, 25% Hispanic, 25% black, and 10% a jillion of random other, but who knows? Okay, so finally, a few of our current initiatives, and next slide, please, um, include reinvigorating the Neighborhood Watch program, which has existed on and off since 1980, according to these old newsletters. Um, so we're getting the citizens to work to better know each other, work together, communicate information better, and also with the police to uh, deter crime. Also getting our um, entrance sign replaced um, conveniently after an impaired driver knocked down the, uh, the right third of the entrance sign, which some of you may have seen and is on that picture. Um, he also uh, screwed up and left his license plate under the plowed up uh, right post. And so identifying it um, got their insurance to uh, give us a nice settlement on it, especially after he contacted the insurance and said he didn't know what happened to his front bumper, but it needs to be replaced on his truck. And they said, we know why. You smashed down the West Laurel entrance sign. Pretty funny. At any rate. And uh, we uh, hopefully the money we got from that will also be enough to pay for uh, installing some of those flashing speed monitor, um, or at least one of those flashing speed monitor things to try to deter, tra deter traffic. <laughs> and also just to mention that this weekend is another one of our wonderful dumpster days. So we're a happy community. We really like living here. Um, tell your friends to think about moving here. Think about moving here yourself, come visit, and would love questions, comments, and uh, things that I missed. <laughs> That's it. Okay, excellent. Um, thank you so much, Barbara. I, I love seeing the pictures and all the diversity and, you know, not living in this area of Laurel, you will always hear about things happening in West Laurel. So <laughs> there it seems like you have confirmed that there's always something going on. Um, what have you heard? Anything funny that we should know about? Oh, no, I mean, just about all the community days, about the happenings at the pool, uh, you know, that there's just, you know, there's a lot of community pride and activity going on uh, on the West side of Laurel. So <laughs> happy to, to know more about it. Um, yeah, so let's go through a couple of questions. Us. We appreciate you doing the article for the hotline. Yes, awesome. yeah, I'm excited to do that as well. And uh, it's been it's been really fun to learn not only about West Laurel tonight and with the process of putting it uh, on our exhibit at the museum, but also learning about the rest of Laurel too. And there's so many great, uh, great little tidbits uh, of very random information. So I'll open it up to you, Barbara, but also to our participants. And for those of you who are living in West Laurel, I've got a couple questions for you. I guess the one question I would like to know, Barbara, from you and other West Laurel residents listening tonight is, um, to you, what makes West Laurel, West Laurel? Why is it different from Old Town or North Laurel? Like, what is it that attracted you to the area? And what is it that is keeping you there? I think everything I've told you about in the last hour is what makes it, I mean, for our personal egocentric point of view, um, we, we got a, what was a, priced as a one acre home site and then there are all these extra acres that are not subdividable. So gosh, there are a couple of thousand dollars for these extra 10 acres that you can have a horse farm. Yeah, I'll take that for a couple of thousand dollars. Thank you. 
So we could never afford such a horse farm anywhere else in the area. So that was, you know, a major thing that put us here. But now seeing how great West Laurel is and the people who live here are really the the dynamite things. And that's something that's really hard to put a slide about, you know, nice but, people. Yeah, <laughs> but, <laughs> that um, is true. But yeah. Yeah, and, and certainly that is something even just driving That's, the area, seeing all yeah. those lots and, and the lands and yeah. you know the, yeah. the lots for farms and, and but being able to ride just out our back fence onto that wonderful trail and see the herons and you know foxes and whatnot on it, it's just totally gorgeous halfway between Laurel and and uh between Baltimore and Washington. And I see somebody in the question ask the trail seems to be only for yes. horses, and I noted that a permit is required. So, yeah, we had, as I mentioned, this big fight. They were trying to close down the trail about 10 years ago. And I said to myself, we're going to win this fight and we're going to get them to open it up, not only for horses, but also for hikers. And with Jim Rosapep, uh, Jocelyn Pena Milnick, Mary Lehman, Ben Barnes, were all out riding and saw that the trail was fantastic and not eroding. We had a long article in the Washington Post. Anyway, so it ended up trail stayed open, got it open also for um, uh, hikers, bird watchers, etc. And it is gorgeous. So please come out and hike this trail. It's absolutely beautiful. So yeah, unfortunately, you do have to have a permit. So for those of us over 65 or 65 and over, it's free. You just go to the WSSC's website and fill it in, or you can go to the WSSC building or the Brighton Dam building, and you get a free permit. And then each year they just email it to you. Um, so there's some advantages of being 65 and over. Um, for other guys, it's, I think, $70 a year or $7 a day for the permit. Um, th that same permit does for the boating also. Um, and you didn't hear this from me, but they never check. Um, <laughs> um, well, that's but, wonderful. So. But basically, they deserve to be supported. I think they really deserve to, because they, they do a terrific job in keeping up this trail. They, they uh, move the fallen tr trees. The, the WSSC has done... Since we, we won this big fight with them, we've had a wonderful relationship. Eddie Franceschi at the head of their watershed group. And they, they're just super people and deserve being supported. Well, that's wonderful. So uh, we had a question that says, uh, can anyone come to visit your horse farm? Absolutely. Bring carrots. <laughs> I'm sure they would love that. Yeah. So, so, so you, you saw my email. So uh, uh, let me know and we'll, yeah. we'll set it up. Wonderful. Yeah, no, no. And thank you for sharing that, Barbara. Yeah, we'll be sure to include it um, as we yeah. follow up with the emails after our webinar tonight. Uh, we do have a few other questions. Uh, someone asked, uh, has there ever been a time when the city of Laurel, the municipality, has tried to annex parts of West Laurel? Um, they have, I mean, what we called West Laurel in past years, as they were have sort of slowly metastasized West they would annex and then we would drop off from the, it being West Laurel when it was annexed. We're pretty convinced that Laurel will never annex all of West Laurel in one fell swoop because we have so much more attendance at our meetings than they do that would take over Laurel if they annexed us. So I think we're safe. Okay, yeah, I think, yeah, it's it's very active, like you said. <laughs> Um, we had a question about uh, if there are any historic houses in the area. Um, oh, yes, and, and there somebody is wrote a, there. The yeah, there's a house. comment as, um, as well. Um, and I will say, uh, just before you, you get to uh, any other comments, Barbara, uh, that we do have a little information on our panel at the museum about uh, a log cabin that dates to the late 1700s. Um, but as far as I know, that is technically Montgomery County. Um, it's even still West Laurel, Laurel, though. It was Laurel, but it's still... It's Montgomery County. So we have it split on a different panel. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, but yeah, yeah, so did you want to talk to that or any other history? Sure, yeah. So, so that's at the uh, back of the uh, uh, Bethany Community Church, mm -hmm. which um, was built a bunch of years ago. There are a whole lot of churches that have been built here. Obviously, it's cheap land, which is where churches tend to go. Um, and Kevin McGee was for years and years their pastor and wonderful guy. And he actually had organized um, 
a terrific uh, uh, used medical equipment that he would hand out to anybody in the neighborhood who needed it and was involved with uh, uh, renovating off that uh, log cabin. I've actually never been in it, but you see it just driving down Riding Stable Road, you see it, and it's beautifully renovated. And there are also old hunt things um, on Aitchison Lane, which is uh, down Riding Stable nearer to 198. Uh, so this was the old Iron Bridge hunt uh, uh, back way before the reservoir even. Uh, on HSN, and a friend of a friend was uh, Jane Toll, an elderly, I knew her as an elderly lady. Uh, she grew up as the daughter of the master of the hunt um, in the 1920s, and she and her friends would gallop down the one-lane dirt road, that is one lane in both directions, Route 198, oh to get gosh. to what was called the hitching post then, for lunch, which then became Tubby's. Okay. So, you know, this is somebody with historic memory of it being one lane dirt, both directions. No, I, I can't, I can't imagine either the yeah. dirt road or the one lane uh, with, with today's population. Um, just as a follow-up to that, we know that when, so I guess when did development of West Laurel begin? It, like the late fifties, sixties, we know there were a smattering of other families in the area before then, but when would you kind of say, you know, that kind of the growth really started? Well, as I say, the <laughs> hotline from 1980 said that there were uh, around uh, 1,400 houses of the 1,800 that are there now. So most were there then. And I think a very large fraction, a very significant fraction were already there in 64 when they were rushing to get in the water and sewer. Um, <laughs> I don't really know the exact year history of different developments going in though. Okay. Yeah, well, that's fair. And if anyone does, or if you're a long time resident, we know that there are uh, still original homeowners that have moved in maybe the fifties or sixties uh, when the association started that are still in their original houses. So uh, if you know of anyone or your neighbor uh, is one of the original homeowners or predates kind of the West Laurel, development, please let us know. We would love to capture some of that early history. Um, and then a final question, uh, where is the entrance for the trail that you were talking about? Uh, there are a bunch of entrances. The easiest entrance is on the, the one that I showed you with that enormous parking lot is uh, Supply Lane, which is kind of the continuation of Bond Mill Road. So you go down 198, um, from Laurel, you uh, cross um, I-95 and get to Bond Mill Road, which is the first, second traffic light. Head right and go up. Or you can come across uh, Montgomery Road from Laurel, which then becomes Brooklyn Bridge Road um, across. And in either case, those will intersect uh, at the West Laurel Community Building, the T. Howard Duckett Community Building, and sort of the continuation of Bond Mill Road on the other side of Riding Stable, uh, of Brooklyn Bridge Road, sorry, is this uh, 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 Supply Lane. And so you just take that to the end, or just look on a Google Maps. Um, go to the uh, third slide, please. If okay. you can yeah, quickly yeah, pull that up and you see, there sorry, I that. should have done oh, that earlier. Perfect. No, I, I see that now. Give me one sec. Just then a picture is worth a thousand garbled words. <laughs> uh, next one, please. <laughs> yeah. So see there, uh, Supply Lane heading off to the top right from Brooklyn Bridge Road. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And at the end of that circle there is the boat ramp. Okay, excellent. Yeah, and then we have uh, comments as talk to Doris. Is it Mapes? Mapes on Brooklyn Bridge Road across from Burton's Lane. She and her family have lived there since the early 1960s. 
Uh, that's great. Thank you for, for sharing that. We definitely uh, want to get some of that uh, early homeowners. Uh, if somebody can give me her contact information, I would appreciate that. Uh, yeah. If um, So whoever uh, KJO's phone is, <laughs> uh, you can feel free to contact me uh, or Barbara directly. <coughs> uh, and we'll be putting that in an email to all the attendees later so we can all get in touch with uh, Ms. Doris. Okay, Maybe she has all the old hotlines. That would oh, be great. she said she's her cousin. Okay, so hopefully <laughs> you better have her information then. So Good. yeah, please feel free to pass give us the contact along. information, yep, please. Exactly. And if you don't want to put it in the chat, that's perfectly fine. But uh, yeah. you can send that. Just email it to me later. Yep. Or email her my contact information if you don't want to give hers out. Whatever. Perfect. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, well, okay. Well, Barbara, is this the point where we have to say goodbye to you and I continue with Thank my... you so very much. <laughs> this has been really fun. I appreciate so much you, uh, including Wes Laurel in your presentations. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you for the presentation tonight. Uh, so to, to let everyone know, uh, Ms. Barbara has to jump off to another presentation. <laughs> so uh, I am going to continue with just a few announcements about the society's upcoming uh, webinars and uh, activities for the fall. So Barbara, thank you so much. Thank you so um, much. And we'll, uh, we'll hopefully see you soon. <laughs> All right, everyone, I am going to uh, to say thank you for attending. I'm going to stop the recording so all of those announcements aren't on the video uh, that we put out there. But please don't leave because we have uh, some great new activities and events coming up. So thank you for joining us. Please stick around uh, if you're alive. Uh, and we hope to see you back at the museum for the rest of our exhibit and next month for the next installment in our fall speaker series. Again, my name is Ann Bennett. I'm executive director of the Laurel Historical Society here in Maryland. Thank you so much for joining us.